Hello and welcome to No Man's Sky, everybody. Alon Paul here, and uh, this is kind of a, a, my one of my very few voiceovers I'm going to be doing. This is in regards to the uh, to, to our special run through of No Man's Sky, the challenge that was made up by uh, Ricey from Ricey Starship Emporium, Captain Steve, and of course the infamous Professor Cynical. As you can see, uh, this is I'm just playing this uh, final light no sky challenge. And I'm just giving you highlights. So as we appear here, you're going to see transitions as we jump from scene to scene. This is me jump, jump, popping up on the planet and taking a look around. I had popped in the other day, it was Monday night, just to take a look around see if I could get some challenges going, some fights going. It literally is like, as I go into here, into options and into the uh, network, I'm checking to see who is here. See my PPP's on, everything's ready to go. There's a few people on, but I found out that pretty much all of these four players, while they're fans of the challenge, aren't actually participating in it as far as I know. So, you know, I decided, okay, what am I going to do here? Uh, you know, I've got everything set up, uh, ready for battles, but no one's going to be on. And it's starting to lead to a couple of ideas. So I went ahead and I increased the amount of, obviously, as you saw, I increased the amount of ammunition I had just in case. I've got a bolt caster on this nice... Um, multi-tool that I'm carrying around. It's putting out a pretty decent and significant amount of damage, but uh, granted, uh, I just don't think any of these people like Mayor NMS and any of the recent re rest of these folks are really interested in doing anything because they keep coming and going from the planet, as you'll see later on. So basically, after looking around and, and figuring things out, I decided to, to head out, and that's where we're going to get to next. Again, this is my very few, I do very few voiceovers when I'm doing videos like this. This was a three hour and 40 minute video that I did. So I went ahead and I just took off from my base, headed south. I think I've headed in this direction once or twice, but I haven't really gone too far. This time I went hours away from my base, just to see if I could find stuff and maybe see if someone would pick a fight with me. And well, it didn't really happen too well that way. I'm gonna be drinking a little bit too, because constant talking all day long and having to do this, yeah. Very interesting. So basically I'm looking for uh, broken machinery just to try to find upgrades. Maybe I'm hoping for a trader or two to drop in. I can get some more other, other upgrades and I just I just keep going. I mostly stick to water, but I'm finding out that this is a pretty dotted landscape. Yeah, there you go. 75,000 kilometers I've, I've, I've traveled. <sighs> anyway. I just kept going. I learned a lot of words, too. I learned like uh, 60 or 70 Corvax words while I was doing this. And there was tons of storms and stuff, but this kept happening to me every single time I played. See what it says? Elon Paul is engaged pirates. How? I'm on foot. How are they attacking me? But it kept happening all the time. They didn't do a heck of a lot of damage, but there was a couple different ways in which I would try to avoid them. One way is I would just, you know, jet out, especially if I'm in a storm and I can get my jetpack jet pack going a little bit longer. I would just jet away as far as I could, and I'd watch them and see which ways they're going and stuff like that, and then see if other ships are going to take them on as well. But if I jet far enough away from the point of attack, they won't attack me anymore, and the, and the engagement just goes away. A uh, second way I usually do it is I'll, I'll just dig underground. So I'll just dig a tunnel, get underground for a little ways, and be like, all right, I'll just wait these guys out, and I'll go a little ways underground. No big deal. Um, again, this place is dotted with water everywhere, so it wasn't like I had to stay away from lakes and stuff like that. I thought I had to stay near a shoreline, and then realize that that's not going to make any difference to me whatsoever. So I would just keep going and going and going and going. So again, this video, as you already know, is about... 35 minutes or so long. I would find buildings all over the place. And then I came across this one. And you know, I was just thinking to myself, hmm, you know what? Why don't we give it a shot? It's protected. And I haven't gotten to a good Sentinel battle in a while. So I decided to go ahead and play out the Sentinel battle. Now, here's the beauty of it, is that having a facility like this, and sometimes you can get an upgrade and things like that. Having a facility like this, the door is broken open. So it's always going to remain open. You can shoot at them outside the door and they don't see you. So this is a great place to get into a sentinel battle, even when you're in survival or even permadeath mode. So we're kind of in survival mode. I just went crazy. And as you can see on the left-hand side, it kept announcing every single time I destroyed one of these guys. It was hilarious. So I'm going to let this play out for a few moments. You're not going to hear me talk. Uh, I may interject a thought or two here and there, but it was mostly 
sneak attacks. Jump out, attack them a little bit, jump back in, take the uh, upgrade, and then jump back in. And I got my upgrades. It really helped getting these upgrades, the, the broken glass, because I was able to um, upgrade my bolt caster quite a bit. So, and we'll talk about a lot of the stuff towards the end as we go. Yeah, as a matter of fact, this might be the best time to talk about it while you're watching this wonderful little five-stage battle. So, one of the things, uh, one of the concerns I have regarding this Light No Sky challenge is that it is very unbalanced. They came out with the rules as they went along. It was a very new thing. We completely understand. It's not a problem. Um, but it seems like after seeing the most recent uh, post from my think it was Captain Steve. It might have been Ricey. I don't remember who. I apologize. I did put a like on your post. Um, in that they, they want to knight people, you know, the three best guys, and they're going to give them special multi-tools and special weapons. It's like, alright, stop. This no longer becomes a challenge, a PvP, because you're giving everybody, you're giving certain individuals advantages. And I can tell you this, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, by all means leave a comment down below, but I'm fairly certain that there was a lot of cheating going on. I'm not even saying that Professor Cynical was immune to it as well. His uh, little escapades he made into other people's bases, creating a new character and making believe he was over there so he could get an egg. Whatever. But where are the eggs coming from? Okay, so they're supposed to get them from certain people, and I get that. And you have an ambassador. But if the ambassador is constantly and is only on the same server as you during the time that you're playing, Captain, Ricey, then it becomes a little one-sided now, doesn't it? So there's a problem there. So these guys are getting themselves so overpowered, they had incredible beasts that they can fly from. Yeah, I got hit by the quad there, and I forgot he was out there, so that was a little bit of a problem. No big deal, no big deal. Um, but you guys had these incredible, um, you know, weaponry. I mean, you guys are using neutron cannons and blaze javelins. I, I'm not a big fan of blaze javelin, don't get me wrong. But in close combat and everything like that, you're just taking people out left and right. And meanwhile, we're running around like myself with Bolcaster and a starter C-class weapon. You know, it's like, come on, give me a break here. Even the playing field. And that's one of the things I put into the, uh, what do you call it, the Discord channel that Professor Sinkel had. I said, here's some ideas. I mean, they're only ideas. They're just, you know, thoughts. By all means, they're just like everybody has an opinion about how to do things. And I decided, hey, why don't you do a point system, level the playing field, everybody gets whatever starter weapon they got, they have to use a bolt caster, they can upgrade the snot out of the bolt caster if they want, but they can use no other weapons but that. No, you can't use an Atlas staff. Even the leaders, Captain Steve, Ricey, Professor Cynical, you don't get to use special weapons, I don't care if you're the leader or not. That's not fair to everybody else. You come out there with a neutron cannon, two blasts, and you kill people. Well, how is that fair? How in the world can, can anybody face that? I'm sitting there plugging away with uh, 980 damage on my bolt caster, and you hit me with two shots and I'm gone. I don't care how far away I am. It doesn't make a difference. So that's really not fair to the crew. So level the playing field. Get rid of the permadeath option. Get rid of the permadeath option. Okay? You die, you go back to your base, you start over again. You don't have to reset everything. You just pick up where you left off, but you give a point system. So if I go out, and there's Rusty Nails, he's entered the system, let's say he was playing, okay? Rusty Nails, I go against him, I take him out. I get 100 points. Rusty Nails goes back to his base, starts over again, gets himself moving along, and then he comes back and he attacks me, a little sneak attack, bam, he get, takes me out. He gets 100 points. See what I mean? It becomes fun at that point. And you give other points systems. You take out a leader, you get 500 points. You get uh, a specific type of treasure. You, you clear out all the whispering eggs around an abandoned building. You get, uh, say, 10 points per whispering egg. Uh, you find an artifact, a uh, buried artifact that's worth a lot of money. You get, say, 10 points for every, for every value over 10,000. So 10,000 gives you 10 points. If it's worth 50,000, you get, you know, 50 points, you know, things like that. So... And it just works up from there. That way, if you have something that is worth two million, you get a good chunk of change. You get a couple. You get like two thousand dollars, two thousand points for your team. That's a great idea. And that way, it becomes a challenge. You can do these quests. Okay, it's ancient artifact time, guys. Let's go for ancient artifacts. And you run out. You try to build up points for the system. How do you track it? And that's the thing: is that it has to be on an honor system. So you have to have a uh, a couple of these cargo containers set up somewhere that you put all your stuff in, and they get points for that. This was interesting, by the way, to just pause for a second. The mech got stuck right here, and I literally could just take him out. 
it was hilarious. I was like, oh boy, did I get lucky on this one. But anyway, um, so you put the stuff into the cargo containers and then it gets counted up towards your team. And that's all there is to it. You know, and once it's counted up and once it's put into, say, a spreadsheet that Professor Cynical or Captain Steve or Ricey would have, they would put it into the, you know, uh, Alon Paul has uh, went ahead and uh, picked up an artifact that was worth a million, so he got a thousand points for the team. Put in there, you delete it from the cargo container. You don't have to worry about it anymore. You don't have to worry about getting money and everything like that. You don't have to worry about getting to the space station. There's no reason to do anything else at that point. You can just scour the planet and have fun. So that was my idea. Sentinel battles, that's another thing. You get points for taking out certain sentinels. Get the point system going. You do what you want to do on that. I think I've ex explained it enough. So here we are, we're at level five at this point. As you can see, the two-legger just dropped in, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there he is, he's shooting his laser all over the place. So, and for those of you who have trouble with these battles, you always take out the healers first take out those little healers because they will just heal the crap out of everything out there and it doesn't help you any when you want to face the big guys so just take them down you get some pugnium for them so occasionally you'll get a little bit of ammunition but mostly it's just pugnium take out the little guys first like I'm taking him out but you notice up oh, there's another healer so I gotta take him out now and I think there was one more I could be wrong I don't remember but there's the guy okay so this went pretty well. Now you notice in the distance there is the Sentinel, um, what do they call that? Sentinel Hub, Sentinel, Sentinel. Yeah, uh, it'll come to me in just a moment. So that particular location is where I was literally headed. I was wanting to head there. I had gotten a map from a previous encounter with Sentinels uh, where I went to level stage, stage four, I think. And oh yeah, that was fun. I'll describe that real quick. Went to stage four on that one. I didn't record this. I really wish I had. Um, stage five came up. I took everything out except for the two-legged walker, and they had a mech on the field as well. And I'm like, well, crap. I've got to try to take this guy out. Um, and what ended up happening is I realized that I could not take these guys out. I had to keep opening the door. The mech was standing right outside. would just shoot flames, and would just burn me up. So I finally said, all right, I've had enough. I've got a tunnel right outside the door that leads off to the west. I'm just going to go ahead and jump in the tunnel and take off, which I did. Jumped in there, took off. They didn't attack me. Great. But then I noticed that the counter didn't come up. I'm like, what's going on? They could still sense me under the ground, and they followed me and followed me. So finally, I popped out of the tunnel, went to a lake, and I just jetted across a lake. I'm swimming across it, and as the lake is you know, getting further and further, I start slowing down. And I'm like, my counter still isn't coming up. I look behind me. They're following me through the lake. Through the lake. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so now I'm getting worried, and I'm going slow now. I'm swimming slower. They're catching up. They're literally catching up to me at this point. So I was like, all right, I've got to do something about this. And I ended up, uh, I dug a hole under the water. I was running out of oxygen. Dug a hole under the water, going out into the, into the land, came back up and healed myself, and then went ahead and just started digging down. I went further into that hill, and I went down as far as I could go, and I waited. And finally the counter came up, and I was able to walk away. And that was crazy. I thought that was the end of me. I was going to have to just say, admit defeat to everybody and call it a day. So, yeah, that was a fun battle. But this one, because of this door being busted open, I can come here, and I can tuck in behind the door and still shoot him from the open door. Because it's open all the time. So really, really handy to be able to do it this way. I love this. I really loved it a lot. So... Yeah, this was a great, great battle. As you can see, he's about to half health. I've got all the shielding gone on his head. And this, this bolt caster is actually doing some pretty good damage. It's about at 4,000 is, its, deep, is its, uh, uh, its hit point damage right now. I have it upgraded with a couple of the Sentinel upgrades as well. And yeah, we're going to take him out here. Gone. There we go. All, level, all five levels taken, and Sentinel's are now disabled. So... Yeah, I got myself a couple walker brains. Now, see, you can make some points out of them. Just an idea. But the way they're going to do it, then that's why I'm disappointed. If they stick to the stick to the plan that they're talking about, about giving these knights and giving them special weaponry and everything like this, it's like, all right, then I'm probably not going to be playing stage two. I wish them luck. I might even show up at the planet and just build the place and watch, you know, with popcorn in hand, if you will, if they'll allow it. But they're going to keep the planet a secret um 
Now, the problem is, and if you notice that name, this is why I did this, Wing Commander Converse Shame 4 has entered the system. So I check it out real quick. I look in here to see who's online. He's the only other person in the system right now. Just me and him. Keep an eye on that name. You'll find out why later. So they're going to keep the system um, that they're going to use. Like, they're going to use this system, but I think they may go to a different system now and give us a different portal address. And you're going to have to apply to play in the number two round. The problem with that is, is that we're going to be reporting people and telling them this person was a troll. They basically showed up and they did uh, bad things and were kind of, you know, not participating in the event, but taking us out. Like what happened to Professor Cynical when he thought he got killed by another player from another faction. It turned out to be just a player that popped up on the planet and took him out. Which I thought was, you know, really, really crappy of this person. That was just the wrong thing to be doing. But they knew what they were doing and they planned it. And that's, that's the whole point. They just became a troll at that point. So anyway, remember that name I was talking about? Okay, so we're headed out to this, uh, what, Sentinel Hive, I think it's called. Um, and I noticed something weird. I saw a ship fly over. I wanted to see if a trader was landing. Then I noticed this. You see how it's all jerky like that? That's a player. That's a player flying over. And I didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of strange. I guess there's a player out there, but I'm going to keep my eyes peeled in case they land and try to attack. Maybe it's a player from another faction. And then this happened. I've engaged pirates again. Go figure, right? And that happened as well. They were literally, they're attacking me. The pirates are literally attacking me. So I look behind me and I see the, you know, the blue... Uh, jet trails or rocket trails back there they are actually attacking the pirates that were attacking me and I kept getting hit I was like oh for crying out loud so I went ahead and I did my usual bury myself of course right now PvP's on so you know I could still be attacked it's no big deal so I went ahead and hid in here and I found a cave and everything like that I'm like alright well you know what I'll just take this cave for a little ways and we'll you know pop out whenever we get a chance you can hear them attacking up above and you know they, they can't hit me no big deal. So later on, I'm going through here. And you remember, you know, I, I keep getting engaged by pirates. So I'm not thinking anything of it when this happens. And I'm like, wait a second. Okay, well, where's the message at the bottom that says engaging pirates? I don't see that. So I look around, and sure enough, this is what I find. Okay, I'm digging into the ground. I don't go far. I just stay and I wait. And then finally, I come back out to take a look around, and lo and behold, I see something that really I find very, very disturbing. So, you remember we, we talked about trolls? Yeah, you're going to see that in just a moment. Hold on. I keep forgetting, I don't think I uh, transitioned this very carefully. I did this because I was thinking, oh crap, I got another player attacking me. But how are they attacking me from the air? They shouldn't be able to do that, so... On the hopes that, and I kept trying to fill this in, and I kept going to the wrong thing. So there we go. I filled it in. All right. So now if you want to, you're going to have to dig down to get to me, right? That's what I was thinking when I did this. Well, not the brightest thing in the world. So I worked my way through the hill. I don't even know why I did that, so don't ask. Sentinel Pillar, that's what they're called. That's Sentinel Hive. Sentinel Pillars is what I was trying to head towards. So I forget, I'm going to go there. I'm only 13 minutes away from it, you know, running-wise. So I just started digging through my, you know, uh, little mountain here or hill or whatever I was in to get to it. So hopefully in just a moment here you're going to see a transition. I keep forgetting. I think I left a little bit too much um, in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. So let's take a look. See, PvP still on. I just checked. Converse Shame 4 is the only one on the server right now. There are no other players. Okay. So I'm going to keep saying it. Converse Shame 4. So let's see what happens. Come out. It's a storm now, so I can really go far on these things. <clears throat> I love having to be able to use my jetpack at times like this. And mind you, it's been about, I think it's about 20 minutes since that first attack. Okay? Literally 20 minutes have gone by. Okay? 
And look at that. There he is. And he's not coming up. I can't even look at the at the ship. So he's got his ping turned off. He's got everything turned off. Heat damage, that's me. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'll head to this building over here and I'll just hang out in here real quick. This guy literally has been following me across the landscape. And then I realized, oh crap, it's an ancient, you know, uh, plateau there. And I just, it's not going to help me at all. So I went in here and I checked things out. You know what I did? That's right. Turned off P PvP. All right. All right, buddy. You want to attack me? Let's see what's happening. Because there's literally no one else on here right now. There's no one else in the system but you. You have everything turned off. So you're just a troll. You're just trying to wreck the game for people. That's what you're trying to do, the challenge. And you think you're being funny. Well, you're not. That was a mean thing to do. It is not the right thing. There you are. Converse shame for. Shame on you. Converse shame for. So you will be, I promise you, I promise you, I will make sure you get added to the list of people that the address for the system is not shared with. You will not be shared the system with at all. And uh, we're just going to continue this video as it's, as it's going right now. I think we've got quite a bit of time left. Yeah, we've got about 15 minutes left in the video. So I will transition. There'll be a couple more transitions, and I'll show you a couple other items that are going on in the game. But I end up toying with this guy quite a bit. And I stay out of PvP for, for quite a quite a while. Um, so while we're waiting for this to transition, uh, to bring up, basically, uh, I told you what my thoughts were about the next phase and what they should do. Again, opinion. I really did enjoy this. Some of the builds were fantastic. If you watched both all three of their channels, Ricey and Captain Steve and Professor Cynical, by all means, check their channels. They are doing um, base build uh previews you know, or checking everything out or going to everybody's bases and checking them out there were some gorgeous bases that were built todd uh todd mc built a wonderful wonderful base so that was cool um you saw the ship go by that was him that wasn't uh, just regular ships going by um or them them let's not say him let's say them that was them that passed by and they are going to each one of these bases and checking them out i don't think my base is going to be highlighted as you know my base is very very simple it's on a pinnacle. It's overlooking everything. Nothing's going to happen there. Now, Herman David popped in, and I'm thinking, oh, crap. Is he part of the, you know, one of the other teams, the Brew Crew or, you know, uh, and the Empire. The Empire is the other one. Is, it, is, is, is he part of one of those teams? I don't know. And I'm thinking to myself, all right, well, if the guy shows up over here to have a fight with me, I'll just send him a quick message and say, hey, I got PvP off. Hang on a moment. Let me turn it on. Okay, go. You know, and we'll do that. But I really, really wanted to get to the Sentinel Pillar. That is my whole point of getting there. I was hoping for a really nice uh, multi-tool or something along those lines. So I hadn't seen Converse Shame 4 in a while. So I went ahead and I just started traversing across the landscape, finding more broken machinery or damaged machinery, looking for more upgrades. I had gotten quite a few upgrades. I didn't get any for a bolt caster, which was sad. But the upgrades I got from the Sentinel battle were fantastic, and I got my damage up to, I think, almost 5,000. But then, you heard that? Yeah, he's coming straight at me, and he can't hit me. But, of course, I did turn off PvP, so this is hilarious. There's his, uh, you know, his little, his starfighter as it's coming over. I did take pictures, of course. I took a couple shots at him with my bolt caster, but really, what kind of damage could it possibly do? Timberwolf 73 added in, and I'm pretty sure Timberwolf was part of one of the teams. Entering the system, I think, means they appeared on the planet. But if, they, if they, it says that they left the system, or that they've landed on a different planet, then you know they're taking their ship elsewhere. So, we'll see what happens here. So, and, and to be clear, to go back to another thought process I had on this. Um, yeah, yeah, jerk. Absolute jerk. Moron. No, he's not a moron. He's acting like a moron. He's being rude. This is hilarious. I mean, you know, be be a be an adult. Get out of the ship. You want to fight me face to face? Do so. Turn on your PvP, and we'll have a little fight. I don't care what kind of weapon you have. I'll give you a fight for your life, there, buddy. I cannot even tell you how many tens of thousands of sentinels I've taken out at this point. Thank you for taking out the hazardous plants, though. We do appreciate it. See, Timberwolf left the system again. They don't have any idea what's going on here, these people. So, I decided to do this. I'm like, you know what? I've got an idea. 
I was going to hide under this rock over here, and I'm thinking, oh, I got a better idea. We're going to have fun with this guy. So, while you wait for the fun to show, it'll show up in a moment. Yeah. I'm still looking around to see what's around, see if I can find some more buried tech. And, not buried tech, uh, broken machinery and everything like that. And then I'm like, you know what? No, I got a better idea. We're going to have a little fun with this guy. So, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to just get up on the pinnacle here. There he is, shooting me. I'm, put, I'm putting myself up here. It's like, you know, come on, hit me. He literally almost hit me with a ship. That would have been hilarious, though. I don't know what would have happened. And gestures. And I was trying to just get down to the point where we're sitting down right there, and it bounced back to need resources. I'm like, whoops, that's the wrong one. So I went ahead and sat down. So I'll take a look around. And watch him. See when he's going to come in. So, and while you're watching this... Uh, hilarity going as it ensues um yeah so like i said i don't know if i'm going to be part of the second phase like i said i might join it and just have a little fun but i'm not really i wanted to do a true pvp i wanted to be skill against skill you take me out we both have bolt casters great you get bragging rights man awesome you take me out with a with a neutron cannon and two shots while i'm trying to take you down at least your shields down with my bolt caster what does that prove Nothing. Proves you cheated. Oh, did I say that word? Yeah, I think I did. I'm sorry. But there's no way that anybody would have gotten a neutron cannon at any point in time, in any possible way, unless they bought it from somewhere. Or unless they provided it to themselves. Or if they installed it. So the second option, that was the other part about this. I forgot about this. The second option is this. You start off the game, rather than creative mode, you start off in survival mode with no tutorial. That's how you start. In order to get to the other planet, you have to get through part of some of these things to get the upgrades for your ship so you can get off the planet. You have to be able to purchase the maps, so you do need some of the... Um, yeah, I know the word for this. Hold on. You get it at every single campsite, every single... In order to call your ship in. You know what it is. It's not important. But you have to be able to get this on your own. Get the maps on your own so you can find a monolith. So you can find the portal. So you have to go through all those steps. Once you get to that point. You're able to use the portal. Then you can use the address that they've given you. To get to the planet. And then you can start the real game. No PvP. Well, PvP, pardon me. PvP, but no permadeath is what I meant to say. And there he goes, by the way. He had had enough. He realized it wasn't any fun anymore because my PvP was turned off and I'm sitting there just toying with him. It was absolutely hilarious. So he took off and he finally ended up on another planet somewhere. So that was the end of it for him. So for me, I think I've already been to the Sentinel Pillar at this point. But we'll get to that in a second. So the point is, is that if you... Go survival mode the whole way. Everybody's survival. You have limited quantities you can put in your inventory. You have restrictions. You don't get all the tools. You have to find yourself a bolt caster. Okay? You don't get to use the pulse spitter. If you find a weapon that has a pulse spitter and no bolt caster, sorry, it's not going to work. Put the, put the pulse spitter away. Too bad. So I go on the network. You know, it's still PvP still disabled. Now, Todd, M Todd MC, great build, by the way. I kept saying that. Very nice build. Todd MC's on right now. He's checking things out. He's trying to fight some people. I don't know how that all worked out. I think in the end, he ended up getting killed by somebody. So I decided, you know what? I think I pretty much had about just enough of all this. Uh, I'm looking around, and I decide I'm going to go for some extra stuff while I'm here. I'm going to go for some extra broken machinery. But if you think about it, the fighting is pretty much over. The fat lady has sung. The whole, ex the whole challenge is done. Empire has won, and we knew it. It's just all over except for the fat lady sitting at, singing at this point. That's it. So I kept plugging away and doing some stuff. So I, I keep the video going for just a little bit longer here so that you can see the alerts that come up on the, on the left side of the screen. So I'm still running. You notice I'm heading south. There's no more Sentinel Pillar because I've already hit the pillar. The weapon in it, by the way, sucked. It was a C-class weapon that wasn't worth anything and all it had was a bolt caster on it anyway. And it was no better than one I had. Actually, it was worse than the one I have. So I decided to just, you know, give up on that. Um, I took out all the pillars around it, though, so I could get a little pub meal. But we, we, regarding anything else, what did I need any of that for? Nothing, really. There was no purpose behind it at this point. 
So I was going to go ahead and call it quits. So again, that's my idea. Survival mode the whole way. You got to work your way off the planet that you're on in order to qualify to go to the other place. Ah, see, there it is. Wing Commander Converse Shame 4 is landed on planet Weemon, or whatever the name of it is, 5. And uh, yeah, I guess he stays over there with his buddies. So I don't know if that's a planet that they were going to select for it, but I implore you, Professor, Captain, Ricey, please choose a different system. Go with a different planet. It could be a hot planet, cold planet, doesn't make a difference. Paradise planet, choose whatever you like. But please choose a different system. So I end up finally giving up. I pull in my starship because it's time for me just to go ahead and, and call it a day. Pulling in the starship is against the rules at this point, but there's really no reason to continue. You know, uh, it's not going to make a difference. Nobody's watching anyway. Nobody's going to come after me. I'm heading back to my base, and I decided to go that way. So we're going to transition from this point where we're taking off, and you're going to see my final approach to my base. If you haven't seen my base before, now you're going to see it here in just a couple moments. There's a pirate off to the left that I can go after if I want, but he's too far away, and I'm not worried about it. A little bit of ground hugging. I did not go out into space and pulse drive. I just flew straight. It took me about three and a half minutes to get to my base. So there we are. So this is a 31 minutes into the episode. This is where we have ended up. I'm landing just outside my base area. Criola Kingdom is on its third or fourth rendition. This is, I renamed it Elon Paul's Criola Mountain. That's what I call it. And these particular features, these particular types of mountains were present all over the planet. A real pain in the neck to get started on this because I kept falling off the side because he would keep you know, drifting that way. But there we go. And there's my base, and no one can really see it. Again, it's not heavily decorated. It is mostly... Uh, I wanted a very high vantage point with some power pets around the outside that I could shoot from without going over the edge myself. And I found they were very, very handy, and I would use them from now on all the time. So there we are, Crayola Mountain. And that's it. And there's my only decoration. That's it. With a save beacon. So nothing special. They're going to take a look at this go, eh. And they're right. I'm not a much of a builder. I'm more for efficiency. So I put PvP back on, and I sat around for a little bit. But you know what? It just wasn't going to work out. So after a couple moments, I end up just going ahead and looking to see who's here. Talene was here, but they kept going back and forth from the planet to the space station and stuff. There's some debris on the planet, I guess. No big deal. There's literally no one really around. Todd, I think, had already jetted by now. He'd already taken off. So that was it. I'm probably going to be checking out the network real quick to see who's here. There we go. Player list. See? It's just not worth it. So this is the end, folks. I want to thank you all for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you like what you've seen. I've got some more videos coming out soon. Uh, so keep an eye open. We might even get a live stream in here on Monday, Memorial Day here for the U.S., this coming Monday, which would be, what, the 28th? Something like that. 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, the 27th. So keep an eye open. And again, thank you for watching. Take care, everybody.